Now let's look at Jehovah's Witnesses. And this is Charles Taze Russell, the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is his tombstone. And if you would notice here, he's called the Laodicean Messenger. If you understand your Bible, Revelation 2, chapters 2 and 3 describe the churches. The Laodicean Church, the Church of Laodicea, is described as the lukewarm church. This church, because it's lukewarm and neither hot or cold, Jesus says that he will spew this church out of his mouth. And that's the graphic description that Jesus says about this church. It should give you a clue as to what... Uh, this is all about. Why would you even consider being a Laodicean messenger? In the front of the tombstone, this is the back of the tombstone, but in that uh, area is also a memorial to Charles Taze Russell and the Jehovah's Witnesses. And so you can see the shape of that is a pyramid with capstone. You also have the cross and crown, which is Knights Templar York Rite Freemasonry. It just so happens that this building behind this uh, memorial is the Greater Pittsburgh Masonic Center. And you can see the square and compass there. So Freemasonry, Freemasons starting this this um, a Jehovah's Witness cult. They have all kinds of, of weird beliefs. They have their own version of the Bible, which is the New World Translation. And that is a gross mistranslation of the Bible. Watch Tower Bible and Tract Society here. And you can see a close-up of that with a cross and crown. I don't know whether or not there was an eye at the top or not. does not look like it. looks like more like a hewn cut stone. <clears throat> now this is the uh, Cross and Crown Knights Templar. You can see the Order of the Knights Templar use of the Cross and Crown. This is actually a phallic symbol, uh, the crown being the female and the cr uh, cross being the male uh, through that. So they all do things, these Freemasons, to make it look like they're Christian, but they're not. But look at here, his literature. Here's the sun, di sun disc, or the winged sun disc uh, of the Egyptians, and he's using this for his students, Bible students. Remember, Egypt represents bondage. It is clear in the Bible that Egypt represents bondage. And you can see here his use of the pyramid in his diagrams with the eye of Lucifer at the top, and then mixing in uh, all of these artifacts uh, from the Old Testament and the Ark of the Covenant. Now, why in the world, again, would you use anything Egyptian? Here's the cross-section of the plan. You can see that also that the pyramid is uncapped there. So the divine plan shown in the Great Pyramid. His friend was a Rosicrucian, and he used uh, many of his charts for his books. And so his Rosicrucian friend has, uh, of course, the uh, pyramid uh, tombstone. And even a Rosicrucian order, you can see the use of Egyptian-style columns. And so you can see the literature here. And use of the uh, uh, Egyptian motifs. Here's the Watchtower. Uh, magazine. There's a more clearer description on this side, and you can see the knighthood. Uh, this is these are papal knighthoods, and of course Freemasonry, which stems from uh, Roman Catholicism and Freemasonry, uh, Knights Templar stuff. Here's the Watchtower, um, and there is on the papal. Uh, one of the papal crests uh, in the Vatican, uh, they use the Watchtower as well uh, as uh, many other symbols. You see lightning, Watchtower. Here is that watchtower building. They are only allowed to read this literature exclusively. They're not allowed to read anything but their version of the Bible, the New World Translation, and their watchtower tract. Everything else is off limits. And it just so happens that a watchtower is at the, the head of uh, Diana of Ephesus. Interesting to note. Here is the sermons again. And then here is a, a Jehovah's Witness uh, space and the use of the Egyptian motifs. You can read all about this in the Watchtower and the Masons by Fritz Springmeier. Fritz Springmeier was a wonderful researcher into the occult and all of these secret societies. He was actually thrown in jail and just recently got out. But um, anyway, he's uh, been an awesome researcher. Now let's look at Seventh-day Adventism. This is Ellen G. White. And she's the prophetess, and she is uh, attributed to founding uh, more than Seventh-day Adventism along with her husband, and this is their family, 
and will show you that they have been involved in the cult of Freemasonry. They uh, stem from the Millerites who predicted that uh, Jesus was returning in certain years, and I believe this was 1843, and then they readjusted that to a year later. Now remember, in the Bible, it specifically says that if a prophet prophesies and it doesn't come true, then you can be assured that that prophet is wrong. She, This Seventh-day Adventism still reads all of her literature and uh, considers her a prophetess, um, by that. But you can see now her husband using the hidden hand symbolism, which is in Freemasonry. There it is again. And there is her husband again. Now you can see now leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist organization. He's doing the hidden hand. The women are doing the hand over the bosom. This is Ellen G. White's uh, tombstone. Or gravestone and you can see it's an obelisk moving on to some uh, illustrations I believe this was done by her husband and you can see the eye of Lucifer here in this tree yes it looks smells and feels like Christianity but look at what they do and so we have now cults of the 1800s you saw in that first chart and so now this is her son and you can see the uh, hidden hand that he's doing. She also has her hand on her bosom, uh, similar to this, uh, uh, that Mackie on that cover of that book I showed you. You can see here the Pledge of Allegiance is a Masonic sign, and now you can see the leaders of Seventh day Adventism here. One, two, three, four, five. And this person in particular. I believe is here located. Oh no, it was Lord Brassy. Sorry. Well, what? Let me explain this. The um, uh, Seventh Day Adventism. What they did uh, when he they traveled to Australia, uh, she denounced Freemasonry, and so she was attributed to bringing one of these Freemasons out of this of Freemasonry, the the cult. And uh, so there he is. And then it was found two years later that he was still involved with Freemasonry. So. With regard to intelligence and how things work, they like to separate themselves from an organization, denounce that organization, but yet still be involved with that organization. And it's all uh, smoke screens. And this is their website uh, symbolism. Look at the single eye symbolism going on here. I can't tell you that that's what's going on exactly, but there are some fishy things uh, happening. You can see this logo as well. Here's the flame. Here is supposedly a book. There's a cross in there, but if you look at the negative space, this cross negative space moves into that top area, forming a cross upside down. Very interesting how they design it. Go look at that Seventh Day logo yourself and decide for yourself whether or not that's the case. This is Pastor B.T. Rice. The ecumenical movement is huge, and look at they always shake hands with Rome, and you would be surprised how many churches, evangelicals, uh, Protestants, all over. They've been infiltrated so much so that the Rome is considered the uh, the uh, true church. All, ever, all roads lead, uh, lead to Rome in this case.